Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, our beloved financial tool that I use on every live show, Portfolio Visualizer, has undergone some pretty significant changes in the way it looks and to some extent the tool itself and one particular change unfortunately is not for the best. So I'm going to show you the new Portfolio Visualizer, just give you a brief overview of, of how to navigate to the two, two tools we use the most often here. And then I'm going to show you an alternative that's free that you could try out that uh, a viewer emailed me about this just this morning. So I've got my coffee. I hope you do too. Let's dive right in. So for those of you saying, Rob, Portfolio Visualizer, I have no idea what you're talking about. So this is what the old Portfolio Visualizer looked like. I'm actually looking at this through the Wayback Machine. You can, you can navigate to the tools that we used and it will even look like for a second, and this can be very slow, by the way, but it'll look like they work. You could maybe just stick with this old version, but unfortunately they don't because what's going on behind the scenes, behind what you see is disconnected. It's not part of the Wayback Machine. So we could put in like the Boglehead 3 Fund Portfolio. Looks good, right? We can analyze the portfolio, but trust me, nothing comes up. So that's the old portfolio visualizer. What's the new one look like? Wow, it's kind of slick. I don't, I don't mind the look of it. Uh, and I like that they've got this, they're monitoring 10 of the top lazy portfolios. I don't, I don't know that I view these as the top 10, but uh, kind of interesting. So one of the things we have to figure out is, and this is true anytime software changes, is how do we, how do we find the old stuff? How do we do what we used to be able to do? And it can be a little frustrating, but it's, it's actually pretty easy. So there's a couple of ways to navigate to the tools. Uh, the first is to go up to this analysis. You've got tools here, right? So, but if you go to analysis first, you can see they've grouped the tools into various groups. Here we have all functions and we can go to uh, backtest portfolio. There's our asset allocation where you can select asset classes and backtest them. And we'll look at that. Here's backtesting the portfolio where you can actually just put in tickers. Uh, and those are the two that we use the most uh, and there they are. Now you can also get to them here, the tools drop down. In fact, it's the first two. So that's how you get to them. So let's start with, we're gonna look at both of them briefly, asset allocation. So when you click it immediately, it's like, okay, this is not right. What, <laughs> what is this? And why do we have a portfolio here and here? I haven't done anything yet. Well, it gets better. We open the analysis and you'll see that they started us with two portfolios. We didn't ask them to do that. In the old tool, it didn't do that. Uh, and for a minute, it's like, well, how do I how do I change all this? Well, you just come over here to customize data, click that, and now this looks if you've used the old tool, looks more familiar, and you could of course just clear this out if you wanted to, boom, and then you could put in whatever asset allocation you want. Uh, this is a 60/40 U.S. market and um, total bonds. Let's make uh, let's put in 20% international and 40% U.S. just to change it. We can hit analyze portfolio and you know it's a, it's a little bit of a different look but by and large it's the same thing and we can see it's going back to 1987 here's our allocation we get a summary we can see let's see a compound annual growth rate right here 7.75 we can see our, our growth uh, pretty much very similar stuff right and then if we want again if we wanted to compare this uh, we again we got to come back here to customize data and you know we could do whatever we'll um copy so that it's the same but then we'll say what if we did 30 us and 30 uh international and then and then we could compare those two portfolios and it's got them here and then you know similar to last time um different uh, rates of return standard deviation the growth so pretty much the same. Now, unfortunately, when we get to an actual, uh, if we want to analyze a, our own portfolio, backtest a portfolio, we go to that. And what we've got to focus on, and, and a, 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 someone that gets my newsletter every Sunday alerted me to this, when you're going to do a, a portfolio where you're going to enter tickers, you can see this one, the sample's got all Vanguard funds. You got to look at this right there. The time period of the results is limited to 10 years for free tier and trial accounts. And I have a free tier. And uh, so you, there, there are paid versions uh, of this tool. I'm not logged in at the moment, but you've got to spend at least 30 bucks a month. I think that's the lowest paid tier they have. 
in order to get more than 10 years worth of data. I think that's unfortunate, uh, particularly since this is the kind of tool, unless you happen to run a YouTube channel like I do, this is the kind of tool you're probably not going to need to use all the time. So I suppose you could maybe subscribe if they'll let you, you could subscribe for a month. Um, in any event, you customize it the same way up here and uh, you can give portfolios the names, you can enter tickers just like before and it's very, very similar. So all in all, I think once we sort of learn where stuff is, because it's moved a bit, it'll be pretty much the same tool to use. Looks a little different. Uh, I guess you can judge for yourself whether you think it's better or worse or not much different at all. But if you're going to put in tickers for a portfolio as opposed to just asset classes, you're limited to going back 10 years unless you've got a paid uh, version, which I will probably do because I use it a lot, particularly on the live show. So what about that free tool I mentioned that a, that a viewer uh, alerted me to? Well, let me show you that now. I just have played with it a little bit. I don't know who's behind this tool. It's it's Testfolio. It's T-E-S-T-F-O-L dot I-O. I'll leave a link below the video. And again, like any tool, we've got to kind of figure out how to use it. So you can have a start date. And I was testing because if you go down here and then you go to the years, you can go back. I, I was seeing how far back it goes. I think it, it might go to like, uh, it might go back forever. <laughs> of course, whatever date you put in there, let's just put in 1837. Uh, it's not really going to go back that far. It's going to go back as far as it has data for the portfolio that we add. So let's add a portfolio. You just click this add button. We can give it a name. We'll just call it three fund. That's all we need. We'll rebalance yearly. You have options. All right. Uh, drag. Let's see. Oh, for annual fees, expense ratios. We'll leave that alone. We'll reinvest the dividends and we'll just do a simple uh, Boglehead three fund portfolio. VTI is um, the Vanguard's total stock market fund. We'll just say, I don't know, 50%. And then we'll do BND for, uh, no, we'll do VXUS for international. We'll say 30. And um, then we'll do BND for the bonds. And we'll say 20. Now we could add, in fact, let's do this. We'll just add a, a, another one and we'll just compare it to SPY, which is another uh, S&P 500 index fund of 100%. Just doing this to kind of see what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, you, you can delete a portfolio, you can clone it. So if we clone this, yeah, it just pops over here and we'll delete it. And um, we've got a starting value of 10,000. We're not going to add anything. You could though, right? You could you could either, as, as the uh, pop-up box there says, you can add, if you're, gonna, if, you're, if you're saving, you'd add a positive number, say you're saving 500 bucks a month or whatever it is, or a year. But you can also model withdrawals with a ne negative number. So that'll be interesting to test. You could also adjust for inflation, but in any event, we'll hit the back test button. Let's get to it. So um, the, the output's very similar to Portfolio Visualizer. In, in some ways, maybe similar to the old uh, version. We've got the two funds. Um, of course, the, the, the S&P 500 uh, portfolio outperforms because there's no bonds and um, International hasn't done as well uh, lately. Notice, by the way, the, their data goes back to 2011, not to 1837, as it turns out. And you can hover over this and it will tell you the fund that's the limiting factor. In this case, it's VXUS. One strategy, by the way, if you wanted more backtesting, is to find a similar a fund similar to VXUS that has more history. It's a possibility. Uh, and then we've got just the charts and a little different than Portfolio Visualizer. But you are going to get, at least at the moment, you're going to get more than 10 years data. So a big thank you to the, the newsletter subscriber that shared this with me. And uh, obviously, I'll leave a, a link below the video. You can check it out. Maybe you'll find that tool to be useful. So there you go. Yes, yeah, some changes at Portfolio Visualizer. On the whole, I think it's fine, except for that pesky 10-year limit on backtesting uh, a portfolio with tickers. Unfortunately, that's the limit unless you have a paid subscription. So there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.